How many know that your blessing is on you? So you can expect the great. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to Daniel, the third chapter. And I shall read the 23rd through the 25th verse. That's Daniel, the third chapter, 23 through 25. And it reads, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Jesus, we come to you at this hour asking you to send a word. Send a word for your people this morning. Let no one leave the same as they came in. And we will forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, I want you to take the person's hand next to you. And I want you to tell them this. I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through. Y'all act like y'all been through some things. Well, find somebody else and tell them, I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through. I can close my book and we can go home because I'm glad I don't look like
Let me see if I can preach this. in Christ I have personally discovered that while we've been through hell we don't have to look like the hell we've been through God is still in the business of bringing us out of the fire without any outward evidence that we've been in the flames as I look at you today it's hard for me to tell that you've been through anything. Uh-huh, you look good this morning. Ladies, you got your hair all done. You got your makeup on. Uh-huh, men, you got on your nice suits and ties. Don't look like you've been through nothing. But I'm glad. I don't look like what I've been through. Listen, when I was younger, one of the first things that I noticed about the older saints in the church was how much joy they had despite all the hardships they testified that they had been through. Then I noticed they appeared more radiant than those that were outside of Christ who were going through similar circumstances. Uh, some of the things they went through, many would have lost their mind, but they kept their mind stayed on Jesus, and he kept them in perfect peace. Over the many years since, why well, I've learned that no one is exempt from the school of hard knocks. I've never seen anybody graduate from the school of hard knocks. If you haven't had any hard knocks, just live a little longer. Trouble will come knocking on your door. Nobody, nobody, nobody is exempt from trouble. But I do have something to tell you. Trouble doesn't last always. Yes, I've learned that you, you cannot be exempt from the school of hard knocks. Uh -huh. The Spirit of God lets us know that we're on a journey from being the victim to having the victory. Do I have anybody in here this morning that want the victory? Psalm Division 30 and 5 helps me to understand that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Do I have any witnesses up in here? Talk back to me up in here. How many of them have had a midnight in their life? Well, as long as you're in your midnight, let me let you know that joy is coming in the morning. And somebody can get their morning time before they leave this building. Do I have anybody in here that want their morning time? So can you just send up a little bit of praise right here? When trials and affliction are the most severe, pressing heavily upon us, we can rejoice that we are comforted by the promises of his word and by his presence that his light cannot nor will not be overcome by darkness. Despite what we as believers are going through, uh, we rejoice because of all the great things that the Lord has done and what we believe by faith he will do. Uh, that's why we can have confidence in the scripture found in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith mm -hmm, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Although what you might be going through might look pretty bad right now, although what you might be going through look like it's never going to stop, hold on to your faith. Tell somebody, hold on to your faith. Tell somebody else, hold on to your faith. You got to hold on to your faith when things seem like they're all messed up. Just hold on to your faith. If you can learn how to hold on to your faith, sooner or later, God is going to bring you out. 
How many know that he will bring you out? Don't let nobody fool you. My God will bring you. I don't care what the problem is. He will bring you out. Do I have any witnesses up in here that he will bring you out? So hold on to your faith. So instead of looking stressed out, beat down, worn out, despondent, and talking defeat, as believers, we must realize, though we be cast down, we will not be destroyed. And we can maintain hope as we go through any fiery trial surrounding us. Uh, we must believe just like our text, that we too shall be brought up from the ashes, just like the three Hebrew boys. Uh, we place our full confidence in his promise, as quoted in Hebrews 13 and 5, that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. As believers, we can constantly sing songs of encouragement, songs like this too will pass, uh-huh. Songs like, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me, uh-huh. Let me go back on you. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ has never failed me. I let the world know wherever I go. He has never failed me. Has he ever failed you? I said, has he ever failed you? You might have thought that he failed you, but he was there all the time. Do I have anybody in here that know he was there all the time? When you was going through your trouble, you thought it was over, baby. But I'm here to tell you he was there all the time. And all you had to do was shout out some praise. So my question, does anybody have a song this morning? I said, does anybody have a song just like the three Hebrew boys? After going through the furnace, they should have burned up. Uh, they should have been hollering and screaming. Uh, they should have been begging to come out. But just like these boys, somebody ought to give God a praise because the fire that you've been through has not shown any outward physical evidence that you had ever been through anything. Uh -huh. Most of you can look back over your life and say, my furnace should have killed me. How many should, can say that your furnace should have killed you? Uh huh. When your husband walked away and left you with all the children, it should have killed you. When your job gave you a pink slip and told you you were fired, it should have killed you. Uh, when the doctor told you there was a sickness in your body and there was nothing he could do, it should have killed you. But do I have anybody in this house that's glad that they don't look like what they've been through? Yes, while we've been through hell, we don't have to look like the hell we've been through. And I'm not ignorant to the fact that some of you have been through some tough stuff that should have killed you, or at least show that you were in the fire. But again, I say that God is still in the business of bringing us out of the fire without any outward evidence that we've been in the flames. And I got some good, exciting news for you. When you were in the fire, he was in there with you. <laughs> How many know that he was in the fire with you? I said, how many know that he was in the fire with you? That's why I didn't destroy you, because he was in the fire with you. If you're glad he was in the fire with you, uh, somebody get up on their feet uh, and give God a praise. Uh, if you know he was in your fire with you, uh, he took the heat out of the flame uh, when you were in your fire. Uh, some of you should be messed up. Uh, some of you should be gone. Uh, but God got in the fire with you, uh, and he put the fire out uh, when it was all over you. Uh, he didn't let it burn you. Uh, turn to somebody and tell them I'm glad. Uh, I don't look like uh, what I've been through. I'm glad. You know why he was in the fire with you? Because he knows how much you can bear. 
Uh -huh. Go ahead, devil, turn up the temperature. As long as I got God in the fire with me, there's nothing you can do. Because it's just like I'm sitting in the air conditioner when God is in it with me. How many glad that they got God in the fire with you? Do I have anybody that's going through something this morning? Well, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got God in the fire with me. And there's nothing the devil can do to me. So let me suggest to you, no matter how hot it gets in your life, <laughs> that you have to be able to say, thank you. You got to be able to say, I know you're in here with me, God. You got to be able to dance <laughs> in your fire. Uh -huh. You got to be able to praise him in your fire. You got to be able to say, I will bless the Lord mm -hmm, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Do I have any people in here this morning uh, that can praise him no matter what you're going through? I don't care what you're going through. You can praise him. Uh, you got to continue praise in your mouth. Uh, I know it's been rough this week, uh, but if I can get about five people to get up on their feet uh, and give God some praise, uh, like they're going out of their mind, uh, I declare uh, before you leave this place, uh, God uh, will get in the fire with you, uh, and he will put the flames out, uh, and they won't touch you. So let me, let me prophesy to you that while you're in the fire, that whatever has got you bound, that is the only thing the fire can do something to. That's the only thing that the fire can burn off. So if you're sick, let the fire burn off your sickness. Uh -huh. If you have the demon of discouragement, let the fire burn off the demon of discouragement, uh-huh. If you're depressed, let the fire burn off, uh-huh, the demon of discouragement and depression. Let it burn off your fake friends. Some of us need to get away from our fake friends anyway. So let it burn off. Can you tell two or three people, let it burn? Let it burn. Tell them, let it burn. So let me close. So do I have anybody in here this morning? Although you can see the flames in your life, uh -huh, and you can feel the devil trying to turn up the heat on you. I just wonder, can we fan the flames this morning? Do I have anybody that can fan the flames with me this morning? Pastor, how do I fan the, fan the flames? Well, you got to open up your mouth. Uh -huh. You got to clap your hands. Uh, somebody got to stomp their feet. Uh, somebody got to run up in this place. Uh, somebody got to dance. Uh, I said you got to dance. Uh, we got to fan the flames. Uh, come on, scripture. Uh, come on, friends. Uh, help me fan the flames. Uh, I need some praise up in here. Uh, I need Judah up in this house. Uh, I need somebody to get up on their feet uh, and give God a praise. Uh, come on, uh, come on. Uh, I said, come on. Uh, and when you come out, uh, you'll be able to say, I'm glad. Uh, I don't look like uh, what I've been through. Uh, I said, I'm glad. Uh, I don't look like uh, what I've been through. Uh, come on, scripture. Uh, let's fan the flames. Uh, somebody dance. Uh, somebody run. Uh, where my runners at? Uh, where my dancers at? Uh, it's time to fan the devil ain't got nothing on us. Come on, musicians. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. It's time. It's time. Put the flames out. Where? Where's Judah at? Come on, Judah. It's time to praise him. The devil don't want you to praise him. He want to keep you in the fire. But I declare if you praise him right now, you're coming out. Grab somebody. Tell him I'm coming out. Tell him I'm coming out. Grab him and pull him to you.
praise God. But I need some real people in here to go crazy for God. Do I have anybody in here that can dance like David did? Can you dance like a crazy man? Can you dance like a crazy woman? What's wrong with y'all? If you see somebody and they're not praising them, say, I see your scars. They're coming back. Shake my hand and say, Pastor, I'm glad. 